Hey guys, today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to be playing Pokey Wild, and there will be a link to this down in the description. Um, you can download it from the official Discord if you wanted to have a look at it. But um, basically what it is, is it's an open world Pokemon game, which I played the other day and I quite liked it. And there's some good game design points in it that I thought would be interesting to go through and talk about. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, let me just do these settings and then I'll I'll talk a little bit more. Um, I might go a large world. My name can just be Jackson as well. And I want to play as May. <laughs> fucking go. Pokemon Emerald was my first Pokemon game. So Brendan and May are my go-to characters. Um, but yeah, Pokemon... I quite like the Pokemon games. Pokemon Emerald, like I said, was one of the first ones that I played when I was younger. And... I think most games that you play when you're young because you're so impressionable are very memorable experiences. But it was cool to play this recently because I've played, tried to play Pokemon games again when I was older and I've just never been able to get into them because I just felt like they were really childish and easy and the dialogue just made me fucking cringe and it was just horrible. Um, and I found this on YouTube. I think I watched somebody play this on YouTube and I jumped in and gave it a shot. And... I really enjoyed it. Oh, am I about to get attacked? No, that thing's running away. Okay. There's a lot I don't know about this. I've played a little bit, but, um, you know, not a huge amount. So I'm just going to play through a little bit and just talk about, like, the game design in it. Um, because I feel like they've done some really good things. The devs have done some really good things in this that I think the Pokemon devs could probably learn from to improve their Pokemon games. <laughs> um, with that said, I am playing Pokemon Legends of Arceus, or whatever it is, um, on the Switch, which is quite good at the moment as well. Basically, so you start with the Marchop. Um, that's my map at the moment, and we're going to just run around and see what we can do. <laughs> so it's open world, and these are the Pokemon out here. And if I walk into them, you can recruit the low-level ones. That's a Raichu, so that's probably going to attack me if I go near it. These are items. i got a Pokeball. Fantastic. That looks like a Totodile. So I might see if I can befriend that Totodile. Please join. <laughs> so it's cool that they just join you like this. You don't even have to fight. So that's nice. A Wingull? No, probably not. So this whole map is randomly generated, which I think is a nice touch because you just... You don't know what Pokemon you're going to get and you can sort of just run around and... What's this? Trainer tips. Pokemon are happier when they're located in their natural habitat. If they're happy enough, they give you items, sure. Um, yeah, you never know where Pokemon are going to be and what you might encounter. So that looks like a Marowak over there. Scorching hot. Okay. Feels dangerous, sure. Um, if I fight that, it'll probably kick my ass, but should I try anyway? I might just try. Let's just see, huh? Oh, it's friendly. Oh, it's a Cubone. Cool. Yeah, join the party. <laughs> Um, so as you can see, there are multiple biomes, which is nice. Um, the desert's a little bit spooky. I wonder what these are. Can I pick these up? These are roast berries. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a couple of those. They'll heal burns. I'm probably not going to use them, let's be real. I usually just let my Pokemon burn. <laughs> uh, that thing is a Drapion, I believe, and that's fucking deadly, so that's going to chase me if I go near it, which I'll show you just for fun. Yeah. And he's got no chill, bro, and he's going to chase me forever, and I can lose him behind a rock, I think. Okay. Those two are about to make love by the look of it. Very interesting. This is a Politoed, I think. Oh, and you're angry. Okay, I might not provoke you. Oh, and that's a Melodic? Militic. I don't know how you say it, but, um, I didn't know they could swim. Okay, I might just leave you alone. <laughs> the other thing about this game is that it's quite difficult. If you didn't get that impression already. But all these Pokemon are quite aggressive. Um, and if I try and fight them, they're actually going to kick my ass. But maybe I should... What if I try and get this Nummel? You're just a friend. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so who have we got so far? couple level 10s, that's nice. Um, so the other thing about this game is there's building... You can get your Pokemon to follow you, which is nice. And I think if my total dial is following me, it'll be the first one that goes into battle if I were to go into a battle. 
Should we try and fight some wild Pokemon? Let's just do a wild Pokemon battle. What the fuck is that? A trap inch. Oh, yo. <laughs> just popping up from the ground. That's spooky as fuck. Okay. What's this dude called again? Sandile. That's alright. Alright, let's go Totodile. So one gripe that I do have with this... Oh, I don't even have any water attacks. That sucks. Um, yeah, something that pisses me off is how slow the battles are. Like, I wish you could fast forward this shit so you don't have to read all the text each time and watch the animations and things. I feel like battles could go a lot quicker, but, you know. So I'm just gonna sit here and just spam this attack button right now. It's pretty tedious, right? But you do level up faster, which is a nice touch. That can be sort of grindy in the old Pokemon games. It's a lot better in Legend, Legends of Arceus, if that's how you say it. Um, why did it just get dark on the screen? Oh, because it's night time. Alright, Brad. <laughs> um, yeah, Legend of Arceus is actually quite a good Pokemon game, to be honest. They sort of took a little bit of inspiration from Breath of the Wild, is what it seems to me. It's a lot more open, and the inventory reminds me of Breath of the Wild, and so does the crouching and the sneaking around, and... Yeah. I might try and catch this Diglett. It's quite difficult to catch Pokemon in this game, but let's, um... Let's see how we go. And Pokeballs are quite hard to come by, but let's... Let's give it a shot. Cool, 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 cool. Alright, I got Diglett now. And I still get experience, that's a nice touch. Okay. Oh, and so does Machop, that's also a nice touch. So it's not just the Pokemon that you battle with, you can level up other ones as well. So I like that... Oh god, what the fuck, okay, some Cacturns just appeared. And the music just amped up. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god. Holy shit! <laughs> okay, this just got like really scary. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> okay, what just happened? A bunch of shit just disappeared. Did it not? Am I imagining things? Maybe they were like fake cacturns or something? I don't know. Okay, but that was scary. And those cacturns are probably like level 40 or something. Like this game, it really doesn't fuck around, right? Like there's a lot of weird shit like that that just happens. Why is there so much desert? Oh my god. <laughs> this map is huge, dude. So this is all random too, which I said at the start, but I have no idea where this is actually taking me right now. Okay, so this looks like the edge of the island again. I'm going to try and stay out of the stand because I want to avoid those wild Pokemon, but... Let's go along the top of the island and see what we can find. <laughs> uh. This game is free, by the way. Like I said, the link will be in the Discord. In the description, and there'll be a link to the Discord. Okay, this is just brutal, dude. It's literally just desert everywhere. I wonder if I can recruit you. What'll happen if I interact with you? Are you going to join the party? Okay. I got a Kangaskhan now. Oh, I need to drop off a Pokemon? Oh no, I still, I still got it. Okay, so they're going to be lovers now. So maybe they'll like drop eggs or something as we're moving around. I'm not really sure how that works. But um, I'm not vibing this desert, dude. So we're going to go south and I might just save real quick. Boom, quick save. I like that. You don't have to confirm that yes, I do want to save. <laughs> which is something that they did in the old Pokemon games, which is sort of lame. Now, there are legendary Pokemon in here as well, which is quite cool. And they're hidden away in dungeons that seem to randomly spawn. I'm not sure if that's how it works, but I've only found two of them. What are you? What is that? Bronzor? I don't actually know what a Bronzor is. Okay, so now I don't have enough room. Oops, I pressed that twice. No, dude, come on, come on, come on. Okay. So, you can let your Pokemon go. I might let my Nummel go, because I really don't... I don't really feel much for Nummels. 
But now he just drops there and I can recruit him again if I want. Okay, so this is looking interesting down here. What is... what are you? Siglyph. I don't know what a Siglyph is. I've never had one of those before. Oh, okay, first patch of grass, right. Oh, that's a Matang. I would quite like that Matang. I wonder what will happen if I throw a Pokeball at it. Okay, that's going to take all day. We're not going to be doing that. Um, <laughs> I quite like Matangs. Maybe I should use a Cubone. Let's see how that goes. I don't know what any of their moves are. <laughs> uh, Bone Club, Ground. That'll be super effective against Metal, right? I need Levitate. Do you Levitate? Does Matang Levitate? No. Maybe that's in later games, I'm not sure. Oh, I accidentally killed it. Okay. Well, that just happened. <laughs> Sorry, Matang. Metagross is probably my favorite Pokemon. It ha has been ever since I was a kid. <laughs> well, maybe it's not my favorite anymore, but it was definitely my favorite when I was growing up. Now, this here is one of those dungeons I was telling you about. Um, and this has a legendary at the end, which I can't remember what it was. I might let my Diglett go as well. Oh, actually, you can use Dig. Okay, that's cool. wonder what would happen if I... Dig a hole? Dig a hole? Dig a hole. I guess I can't dig in here. Okay, well that's sad. Dug a hole. That's what you say, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm pretty sure I can get attacked by a wild Pokemon in here. And this reminds me of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. It's like these procedural labyrinths. And you go down floor by floor and find treasure and... Um, it gets darker as you go, actually, which is quite scary. And there are multiple branching pathways on the way down. So some stairs lead to dead ends, eventually. Oh my god, level 22, bro, you're so strong. I'm not strong enough to be in here yet. Okay, I'm gonna need to use my Cubone again, I think. Or maybe my Marchop? No, I can use my Cubone. Is ground super effective against ground? I want to believe that it is, but let's see. Okay, so Bone Club attack. Oh, fuck's sake, bro. Am I about to get smacked up? Do you reckon I'll survive it? Let's see. <laughs> Rip. See ya. Um, I don't know. Let's give Bronze Aura a spin. Um, okay, so you're sort of lame. Oh, for fuck's sake, bro. See, this is annoying. Um, I sort of don't want to play anymore already. Like, just... Waiting for these animations to play is just, like, so boring, dude. Um, alright, what if we go march up? I don't even think I'm going to be able to kill this thing. Maybe I should just stop trying. I <laughs> can't even run away. Fuck, dude. This thing is going to kill all my Pokemon. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be in here. So maybe I'll see if I can grab this item and then get out. Unless I have a Pokemon that can repel. I can teleport, but I don't think I can use that. Oh, I can ride my Kangaskhan. <laughs> Rad. <laughs> Two Ultra Balls, cool. Alright, we'll go and put them to good use. I'll go and catch me a Legendary. No, probably not. I don't think I'm going to be able to find a Legendary with my Pokemon. They're too weak. Alright, so we gotta try and get out of here. Um, okay, so I've got some Pokeballs and some raw berries. Um, if I get you to follow me, so I'm not riding anymore. Actually, you know what? I think I might. Oh, no, okay. Never mind anything that I just said. Oh, a nose pass. I want a nose pass. I sound like I've got ADHD right, right now. I'm just like jumping from topic to topic. I can't recruit you. What are you? Is that the evolution? Probo pass, probably. Okay. They look like, um, Smeagles in there. 
Oh, fuck off, would ya? <laughs> this drapement. Okay, so we got some grass, finally. That's good, that's good. The music in this is quite good, too. It's like, um... I mean, I'm assuming these are from other... I've heard this one. I know this one's from a Pokemon game. I don't know if this is like an 8-bit remix or like whatever, but... Alright, we're back in the freaking desert. Uh, I can't even get through here. There's like too much, um... Too many big trees. I need a Pokemon with cut so that I can actually cut through. You can chop down all the big trees, by the way. Oh, I can't even get through there. That's awkward. Imagine I was just like trapped in here now. I'm not going to fight everyone because it'll just take forever and the stream will just be fucking Pokemon battles. Oh, good god. Okay, so I need a Pokemon with Repel, probably. Or maybe I should just stop playing, I don't know. <laughs> That looks like a Charmander. Th oh, and that's a Meganium. I can't remember how you say the say its name. Uh, you can dig. Okay, so we don't actually need Diglett anymore. Then. Let's drop Diglett. See you, bruv. Oh my god, the one fucking patch of grass, bro. Oh, Minim. Minim? Minin. It's kind of cool, because there's like... So many different Pokemon in here. Alright, Charmander, you're mine, bro. Let's go. Um, so I think some of my Pokemon were injured, were they? Yeah, well, one of them's dead. So what you do when your Pokemon are injured is... You pull out your sleeping bag. As long as you don't try to use it next to your Pokemon. Because if you use it next to your Pokemon, it glitches. Okay, so it looks like a Meganium just laid an egg. So... This is a nice touch as well, so the game continues while the menu is open. So you can watch your Pokemon recover in real time. Um, I'm going to have to let somebody go. I think I want my Cubone. I might get rid of my... Ooh, maybe I'll get rid of my Bronzor. I don't even know what a Bronzor is, dude. Well, maybe I should keep it so that I can learn what it is, but to be honest, I just want this egg. Which means this thing is about to attack me. The Meganium. <laughs> Alright. See ya. <laughs> oh no, not in the grass, not in the grass, not in the grass. Woo! Okay. What is that Pokemon over there, I wonder? In the snow. That looks like a, um... Sizzle in there. They're quite cool. Okay, so I'm assuming I need a water Pokemon with Surf or something so that I can get across the water. Can you use Surf? No. Hmm. I wonder if I can just fight you. Oh. I can't. Okay. Sorry, Cubone, bro. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to let Cubone go for now. No, not Cubone. <laughs> Come here, Lotad. Alright, let's see if Lotad can surf. No, but it's got cut, which is interesting. I have no idea how to actually cross the water then. And it's night time again, which always scares me a little bit. But now that we've got this cut thing going again... You can just go and chop through trees and shit. So this is nice. Like, I like that the whole environment is interactive and your Pokemon can actually interact with the environment. Uh, I think I need to have you stop cutting so that I can pick up items. So, yeah, Pokeball. I would like a Drowsy, but I need, um... I need more space. Like, I don't have enough room in my party. So maybe this would be a good time to build a house then, actually. So I might build it over here by the water. Looks like there's some open space over here. So to build, um, I might actually need some more 
more trees. So what you do is you get your... Oh! Lotad can't cut large trees unless he's evolved. That's sort of lame. <laughs> I know that I can cut them with a Absol, because I had an Absol in my last one, my last run. But basically, if you get some grass and some trees, um, we can whip out our march up our fighting type and we can build so you use cmv to switch the tiles so how this looks is like this it's a bit of a clumsy building system but you know it does the job um what do i want roof wall i want wall it's a bit awkward to try and position it where you want to actually build <laughs> as you can see i'm struggling a little bit Oh, okay, well, I'm out of material, so I guess that's my house. <laughs> but I need a door as well, so what do I need for a door? I need more grass. <laughs> yeah, okay. What happens if I chop this down? I get some berry seeds. Okay, that's a, oh, there's a chikorita over there. I like chikoritas. I think I'm about to get one anyway. But why did it just, like, go dark for a second? Oh, okay, my egg's hatching. Right. It looks like a Machamp in the bottom left of the screen. Yes, I got a Chikorita. Cool. Okay, so that's some more grass. What if I get a little bit more? Maybe it just gets dark in this biome, this grass biome. It looks like a foresty sort of biome. And that looks like a Houndow down there. Or a Houndoom, whichever one the evolved form is. It's quite cool, the variety of Pokemon, you know. Like you can get you can get basically anything. It's really really cool. Um, okay, so this is my door. And it says that the grass is grayed out, but that's a lie. It just hasn't updated. So <laughs> the way that the building works is I just if I put a door there. I can walk in. And now this is my house. <laughs> um, so let's put some more walls in. <laughs> it's a little bit buggy, but like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, so that's my house, right? Here we go. <laughs> And now I believe if I were to, um, oops, can you use cut? Oh, Chikorita can use cut. Okay, so Lotad, you're going to stay here forever. Have fun. <laughs> um, and I might, I might just run around with everybody else. I like keeping my Kangaskhan because I can ride the Kangaskhan. So maybe we can go up here now. This is the benefits of having a riding Pokemon. Okay, so where the hell are we? Um, fuck, dude. Look at the size of this place. It's enormous. So that's basically the top, I think, up there. Because it looks like the water's starting to arc around. So if I were to, like... What the hell was that building down there? I should have gone into that building. Center of screen, just there. Anyway... Um, I might go straight down and see if I can get to the bottom of the map just to see how big this is. And this isn't even the largest difficulty. This is just large, I think. And I think there's extra large and then extra, extra large. Um, Rhyhorn, Rhydon, one of the two. Uh, Marchamp. I'm too weak to fight them. But what you do is you train on lower level Pokemon, level up, like in the wild, and then you'd be able to fight these and then um, catch them with a Pokeball because they don't automatically ref refriend you. They're a little bit harder to get. Um, okay, so this is actually really hard to get through here. But I'm gonna try. And I'm just gonna run from battles. Oh, is that a Volbeat, I think? Yeah, Volbeat. But I can't catch every Pokemon. I've just gotta keep going. Just gotta keep moving. 
So that's a Volbeat there, I think. And that is a Houndour and a Candle thing. And that's a Breloom. I quite like Breloom's. Oh, here we go. So this is a graveyard, which has got some spooky shit in it. Chester Bear is nice. That's a Dragonite over there. A Dragonite and a freaking Charizard. <laughs> Just roaming around in the wild. And if you fight them, they'll be like level 40s or level 50s or something, which is a bit scary. And then it looks like we have a Clefable or a Clefairy in here. And a Haunter. Alright, we're not going to fuck with them. Um, let's just keep going. Okay, so here's a lake. <laughs> and I'm guessing it's night time again. It looks look pretty pretty night-like. There's a purple Pokemon over there. I can't see what that is under the tree. And then we have a Mankey. Okay. Is that a freaking Gyarados? Oh, is that an Ampharos, I think. Oh, I'd really like to catch that. If I was going to be playing on here for longer, I'd come back and I'd catch that. But, um, yeah, I sort of just want to show you quite a bit of the game. Um, just to sort of give you an overview of like what it's like without wasting time and grinding. It's nice that there's items scattered across like this. Pokeballs, you can craft Pokeballs actually back in your, your little base. That's a Lapras in there. That's cool. Um, I like the reflections in the water, that's nice, you can see the stars. So that looks like a Corsola over there, and then we have a Psyduck down in the bottom. That's a Shelder, I think, up there. And we're still not at the bottom of the map yet, <laughs> which is a bit crazy. I don't know what that Pokemon is. Oh, that's a Wartortle. Yeah, and then we have a Totodile and a Squirtle. Nice. Okay, I think we're getting close to the bottom. I quite like this biome, it's like, um... Sort of just by the beach with cliffs and things. Yeah. Oh, and the tide's coming in. That's a nice touch. Okay, so this is the bottom of the map. <laughs> Pretty small game. And again, this isn't even the largest size. This is freaking enormous. I heard rumors that the devs are going to do multiplayer so that you'd be able to explore this with some friends. I think that would be a really, really nice touch. Um, the legendaries are very interesting because they're quite hard to find. Like, you're running around this map and you don't know <laughs> where everything is. So it's like, even I played this for like probably six or seven hours before I started this new file to do for the stream. But, um,. Now that I'm playing it again, like from the start, it's like a completely different experience because I don't know where anything is. So I feel like that's really nice and you get to go through and find all your own Pokemon again. Um, yeah, that's a Corphish, I think. Okay, I'm sort of like getting stuck here a little bit. Octillery. Starmie down there. Um, or a Staryu, whichever one. Now the tide's coming in again. Yeah, it's cool. So yeah, it's like it's nice that it's um it's nice that it's random. It's nice that it's harder than normal Pokemon games, because normal Pokemon games are just pushovers. It's like you never lose a fucking battle like ever. <laughs> like if you if you pay a shred of attention, it's like impossible to lose a battle. Whereas in this, it's like you've really got a Comet Punch, that's an interesting move. You really need to um what just happened? It looks like Psyduck lost half its health and then, I don't know. Um, but yeah, in this, it's like, so far it seemed pretty easy. If you've been just been watching and you haven't seen this game before because every Pokemon I've battled has been quite weak, apart from that Sandile in the fucking cave. But if I, am I nearly back where I knew I started? No. No, that's way up there. Okay. Um, but if you... If you fight like just a random wild Pokemon, like an evolved one. So let's try this Ledian. So if I provoke it by interacting again, it's going to chase me. <laughs> oh, and I get this item. Pokeball, cool. Alright, and I'll see if I can fight this Ledian. And I might whip out my Charmander. And just see if I can get the first... I'm not going to get the first strike in. Let's be real, but... I'm probably not going to get any strike in. Let's see what level this thing is, anyway. Level 50, okay, so there you go. This is what I mean by it's fucking extremely difficult. Like, this is, it's gonna one-shot me, and I'm not gonna be able to escape. <laughs> I 
So, um, these Pokemon are freaking everywhere. And once you provoke them, when you come back to them again, um, they're still provoked. <laughs> so they'll chase you down again and you won't even have to interact with them again. I'm not going to be able to get away. This thing's literally going to kill all my Pokemon. But, um, this is, it's a nice touch that the Pokemon have memory. You know, it's not just like you encounter a random Pokemon in the wild. And it's just this random once-off experience. Okay, I need to run now. I need to concentrate. Otherwise, this thing is going to catch me. <laughs> yeah, it's not just like in normal Pokemon games where you have a once-off experience with a Pokemon. And then... Um, and then it's like you never see it again. It's like it's just a... It was just a random encounter. And the information's erased outside of the encounter. And there's no history. Whereas... This version of Pokemon, the part that I, part, the part about it I really like is the fact that the world's randomly generated as it is, but then everything's permanent, and you can build structures, and I can go back to my house and I can add on to it and whatever, and even the Pokemon that I aggravate, they remember the encounter where I aggravated them, and I feel like that adds more dimension, another dimension to the game. You know, it's like. It feels like you, your actions are actually changing the world, and it's like, you can get so nostalgic, like, <laughs> coming back here right now, this freaking Lydian's gonna try and fight me again, and it's like, every time I see that Lydian again, um, it's gonna try, <laughs> try and fight me. So, I really like that. I like that about this game. Um, just, the fact that your actions seem to, like, they have consequences and long-lasting effects. Like, I, I really appreciate that they put that in. And if you were to, um, if they would, if the devs were to flesh this out even more, so that, you know, it was, like, um, multiplayer and, you know, you could really build up a big world with your friends, it would be a little bit like Minecraft. It's like you could visit the same, like, Pokemon world in the future. And be reminded of all the times that you spent building with your friends and like go and visit your old base and see all the Pokemon that you left in your base and you know all their levels and all of that um it's just cool to see all that stored in the computer as like a you know it's like a virtual world um the freaking wild Pokemon encounters are so frequent but I like that you can get the repel ability on a Pokemon. So all of your Pokemon that have unique abilities, which is a nice touch. Which I think I've said a million times. I keep saying nice touch again and again and again. But it is. It's a nice touch. Um, so that it feels like your Pokemon aren't just bits of information just for once-off battling. Like in the other games. But it's like, you know, they're useful and they can change the actual environment themselves. I'm just going to run. Um, what I would like to see which Pokemon Legends Arceus does is how the Pokemon can actually sort of fight you in the 3D world. So it's like instead of just chasing you like they do in this game, what Pokemon Legends Arceus does is the Pokemon literally fucking try and thunderbolt you and like fire blast you um, when you're out in like the 3D battlefield, which is really cool. Um, so... I think, like, the best case for Pokemon, what I would see, is this sort of, the mentality that's gone into this, where it's like open world, you can go anywhere, it's randomly generated, so you don't know what you're going to get, it'd be cool if it was multiplayer, it's good that it's hard, and it's good that the Pokemon abilities can interact with the environment. I really like all of that. Now, the thing that lets this Pokewilds down, in my opinion, is the fact that it, it isn't as charming and real, well it's charming, but it's not as real and like immersive as a 3D Pokemon game like Pokemon Legends Arceus. Um, like that feels like a real world that can sort of trick your brain into thinking that you're literally there because it, it looks so real and it's like it's so, so much more visually pleasing than this I think. Um, but, you know, so I think what would be really fantastic is if there was a Pokemon game that was like this, in all those ways that I mentioned, but in 3D, and with the Pokemon abilities also being able to be displayed and express themselves in 3D space, so things like Fire Blasts and like, like it'd be cool if I could just hit the X key right now, and Charmander could like, <laughs> send a Fireball at that Pokemon over there, 
and that Pokemon would be trying to close the distance to fight me and I'd be moving around like this. It wouldn't be really Pokemon anymore because it wouldn't be turn-based, but like, I feel like that'd be pretty rad. But, anyway, I wonder if I can find a Legendary. I don't think I'm going to be able to, because I think they all take a little bit of effort to even get to, and that's something I'm not going to do on the stream, so. But, um, oh, it's running away. That's interesting. I think we saw one of those earlier, actually. Okay, so I'm back to where I started, I think. I did, like, a full map of the, the terrain. So it seems to be, like, um, grass and these rocky areas on the outside, and then as you get closer to the center, you get these deserts, and then you get the mountains. So you get these snow peaks, and there's, like, a volcano mountain somewhere in the middle, which I might actually just see if I can give you a little taste of. This isn't working too well. Oh, a deli bird. <laughs> I like these things. Level four, quite weak. Um, but yeah. Okay, so this is really, really hard to get through here. I like that these rocks have just appeared on the um, ice so that you can sort of navigate a little bit better. Okay, so now we're in a volcano. Which is a bit fucking intense. <laughs> oh my god, dude, look at this place. Okay, that's a Charmander. I can't get out there. Um, did I have a Pokemon that had Dig? I don't remember. Kangaskhan can't use Dig. Okay. No, I let go of my Diglett, didn't I? And my Bronzong, or whatever it was, my Cubone. So yeah, this is a volcano biome, which is quite cool. Uh, I wonder if there's more up this way. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's have one last look at the map, and then I think I might pack up. Okay, so the volcano looks like it spawns in the dead center, perhaps. Well, actually, this isn't the center. It's just a volcano, you know? I haven't actually been to the center because I haven't seen the other side of the map. So maybe that's the last thing that I'll do, and then we'll... Then we'll pack it up. But yeah, it's cool that the world's a little bit difficult to navigate, you know? And the more Pokemon abilities you get, like the ride, um, allows you to get to new places, and I'm assuming Surf does the same as well. Okay, is that the edge? Maybe that's the edge. That looks like the ocean to me, so... Pretty decent sized island, you know? It'd be cool if you could... Oh god, Drapions. <laughs> It'd be cool if you could run into other players and then battle other players in here. Like if there was just one of these worlds running on a server and anyone could join it, you know, like a Minecraft server, you know, and you could just be running through and you could challenge other trainers to battles, <laughs> ambush them out in the desert. You and your mate could double battle them and then take all their shit when you beat them. <laughs> just rob them in the desert. Yeah. Okay, so I think I think that's just about all I want to show you. But there, there are more spots in here, you know? There are places where you can find legendaries, like temples and things. Fuck, this is massive, bro. I can't believe I actually found that temple in the, um, the desert. Where was it? Just there. Where I found the Bronzong, I think it was. But I think there are more of those, you know? Um, I know there's a warehouse that you can get into with a key that you find somewhere randomly on the map, which is interesting. Um, I like that, that you you got to explore the whole map for a key that unlo unlocks a secret area. And you never know where the key is going to be. I'm assuming it's just like a random tile. But, um, yeah, so just to summarize, I suppose, how long have I been playing for? 40 minutes, yeah, I suppose that's about what I expected. Um, it's good, you know, like, it's not really the type of game that I'd play for, like, you know, dozens and dozens of hours, but... You know, I, I, I have fun playing it, and I think that they do a lot of things right. Like, they've, they've taken the experience of Pokemon, which is, it's a good game, you know, like, Pokemon's, Pokemon's, like, the most profitable, um, entertainment something, rather, um, like, ever. Like, it's made more money than, like, anything. <laughs> Just, like, the, the franchise of Pokemon. 
um, because it, it's good, you know, they've done a lot of things right, Nintendo have done a lot of things right, but there's a lot left that could be improved with Pokemon games, and I think this is, um, you know, this game has done done well in improving on some of those things, um, sort of, you know, the, the, the random element, um, the difficulty, yeah. Um... Yeah, it's cool. It's cool to just see Pokemon in like a different sort of way as well. Um, it's just like the same sort of it's it's the same Pokemon and it's the same sort of mechanics, but it's like you play differently because it's it's open. You're not like being funneled through like a story or anything like that. Um, which is it's a nice change, you know, because that's one of the things that has got me fed up with Pokemon Legends Arceus is the the story of it just feels slow and I'm just I'm not that interested in it like I've <laughs> like no disrespect to the to the writers or anything um, because you know like they, they do a good job and if I gave time to it um, I would enjoy it I know that I'd enjoy it but um I sort of just want to I just want to play it because my emphasis when I play games is just on the game development like the design and the, the mechanics and things like that um, so I just, it's it's nice for me to have a game like this to try out because it's just gameplay um, and you can just go wherever you want, which is nice. You can catch whatever Pokemon you want in whatever order. You can catch really high level ones early <laughs> if you're brave and like you put the effort in, you know. Um, and you can get yourself in situations that you're not ready for, like in that freaking tunnel just there. And it's like, it's sort of mysterious because it's like, in the beginning of the game. Like, if I had played this when I was younger, you know, like, when I was an impressionable impressionable kid, um, like, you know, when I was, like, you know, nine or something when I first played Pokemon Emerald, if I had played this instead, um, it would have been quite a, quite a scary thing going down those stairs and suddenly discovering all these strong Pokemon and it getting darker and darker as you get down below because it gets really dark in the bottom floors, you know, and you actually need to take a fire Pokemon in there to see. Which is another nice touch that they've done where they've given the Pokemon abilities to actually interact with the overworld, like this place, you know? Like I'm riding a fucking Kangaskhan right now, like that's pretty rad, you know? Your Pokemon have abilities and uses outside of battle. Um, but yeah, you need a fire type Pokemon in there just to light your way, so... <laughs> like, you, it's literally pitch black. Um, and you've got an escape rope in your inventory so you can escape if you get, like, lost. But it's just really cool to have these really like oppressive <laughs> dangerous environments um, that you just stumble across with legendaries in them as well there's a this is a sort of a spoiler but there's a legendary at the bottom which I think I already said I might have already spoiled that but whatever um, so you know like it's there's quite a quite a lot quite a lot of cool shit in this um, and I'll just talk one more time about the the point of being able to change the environment here it's um you don't get to see the full potential of it because it's just you by yourself building a base and that's not quite the same as when you've got friends in here and you're building a base and a shared experience together but if this were a multiplayer game and the pokemon were really dangerous and attack perhaps could even attack and destroy your fucking home <laughs> it'd be pretty rad to have like a base out here in the desert you know and like have to defend it against the against the AI of the Pokemon. That'd be interesting. It looks like some water just spawned up there. Maybe the snow's like melting or something. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Um, but yeah, it's cool that the environment changes. You know, it changes with the weather. It changes day and night. And um, I don't know if there's like rain and sandstorms and things. Um, that'd be a nice touch. But yeah, this is cool, you know, I really like the Pokemon series, and I feel there's, there's so much that can be done with it, because the Pokemon are such, like, there's so many brilliant creative Pokemon designs, and just having it as strictly a turn-based linear game, like it's been with Pokemon Forever, <laughs> where it's like, you know, you go to, from gym to gym in a linear progression through a story, and it's all very carefully scaled and all of that. You know, it's, it's nice and it works sort of well, but I think, for me personally, I think there's so much untapped potential in this sort of non-linear game design 
these non-linear designs where you just get fucking dumped in a world and you can go any way that you want and you never know what you're going to get and it can be very difficult and you've got to be prepared which is something that they did in um, Scarlet and Violet I think as well actually the new ones um, but that apparently, I haven't played it just yet so I, I shouldn't speak about it yet but from the videos that I've seen they, <laughs> they had some serious technical problems with that um, which is sort of a shame but I think their head's in the right space with how they're trying new things with the Pokemon series, so, you know, um, yeah, Pokemon's good, and I think it could be better, but that's what I'm getting at, so, I think I might stop that there, um, is there anything else I want to say about Pokemon? I would really like to see a real-time 3D action <laughs> Pokemon game, with Pokemon moves in real-time, like, where it felt something like, um, Elden Ring, <laughs> you know, where it's like, you move it around trying to dodge shit, and, or like Breath of the Wild, another example, um, where you could possess your Pokemon and then dodge, <laughs> literally use their abilities and dodge your opponent's attacks and play to environment, different environments with different advantages and so on. I think a Pokemon game like that would be really, really, a really cool addition, so, um, and then if you added this whole random generated roguelike thing into it as well, that'd be fucking awesome. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to leave that there. I hope that was interesting. Um, if you actually watch to the end of this, maybe leave me a comment so that I know, because this is the first time I've done a video like this on this channel, and I'm not sure how interested people are, which I suppose, well, it is quite important. <laughs> It'll play a part whether I do more of these or if I just leave it here, so... If that was, if this is interesting and you'd like to see more of this sort of shit, then let me know. Um, but, yeah. See you in the next one. Bye.